This is the original purchase agreement from 1961. What in the world? is that all right guys this is a total nightmare this was the hardest part of today like 350 and we're still really hot on coolant hey, the harp. yeah it does sound pretty good look at this oh, yeah. from, it's dude. a rolls royce you gotta have the great oh. coupon it's not a musical instrument although it does sound pretty good <laughs> well i made a little bit of an impulse buy and by a little bit i mean a very very big impulse buy I'm going to the Amelia Island Concours Car Show again, and just like last year, I wanted to have a cool car there, so I did the most logical thing. I found a cool car sort of kind of near the show, and my plan is to drive it there, hence why I am in South Carolina, $26,000 lighter, and the proud new owner of a 1961 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud II. Now, I know nothing about this car other than they use the Silver Cloud III in the old gray Poupon commercials and that this one needs a lot of work. So from what I can tell right now, it needs something with the brakes. It has no brakes. Got no brakes and it makes a really, really weird noise. That was that was that was weird. Ah, what is that? Stop, stop. <laughs> I don't know if this is the best road trip car. It's also got a little bit of a misfire. And it's been sitting for basically five years. So it was owned by an older lady. She just let it sit forever. The fuel turned into varnish. It's kind of a big mystery. I got it for a really good price because of this. And I, for some reason, think this is a, a good car to drive 150 miles to a car show. Yeah. Okay, now I've given myself one entire day to fix everything on this silver cloud to make it roadworthy. Keep in mind, it is 60 years old. And I actually had given myself two days, but my plane, the plane that I was taking here, not my own plane, it broke. So my flight got delayed and now I only have one day. But luckily, uh, Steve, who brokered the deal, who you're gonna meet here momentarily, has already drained all the varnishy fuel out and at least at this point, it starts. So we're starting from somewhere, I guess. All right, so if my new Rolls Royce, can't believe I'm saying that, if my new Rolls Royce doesn't burn to the ground, if it makes it to the show and I can eventually ship it back to the legit street quarters, I'm probably gonna make a full episode on just geeking out over weird stuff. So little teaser here, guys, when you pop this little cover off, these are the fuses. These pieces of wire are fuses. And here are your spare fuses from Rolls-Royce. They're just kind of tied away here. And when one melts away or burns up, you cut off a piece of wire and replace it. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen that. Really cool. It also has two glass mason jars. They look like literal mason jars for the brake fluid. So I guess this has dual master cylinders and I think one of them doesn't work. That's why we don't have any brakes. This is my favorite part of this car, I think, is the documentation. So this is the original purchase agreement from 1961. So this guy traded in a Continental Lincoln Mark II and he paid $14,000 for the rolls. They gave him 1,500 bucks for his Lincoln. So that kind of stinks. Uh, but they just kept immaculate records and the paper just looks brand new. It looks like this was printed yesterday. So we have, receipts from this one's from 1963 look at this 20,000 mile service this guy actually drove this thing 70 dollars for the 20,000 mile service that would probably be like three four grand right now on a rolls royce i have no idea there's letters um from from people from the car dealership it's just it's unbelievable so i have tons of records there's more in here as well so Anyway, we just have too much to get to in this video because we have to fix everything on this for me to be able to drive it, I hope, uh, all the way to the show and use it as basically my rental car for the entire weekend. So anyway, with that, uh, I think we're gonna start off with the brakes. Those are kind of important. All right, so this is Steve. He brokered this deal. So this was owned by an older lady that Steve knew and she had this car in Atlanta, Georgia, right? 
Atlanta, Georgia. And prior to that, it was uh, mostly a Western car, spending time on Nevada and California. Yeah, which is one big reason I was attracted to it. It's basically rust free, and these bodies are all aluminum. That's right. Which is great. Those are aluminum. Yeah, so obviously the body's rust free, but the frame is nice as well. Um, and he towed this car from the Atlanta area to his house in South Carolina, and it's basically just been driven on his driveway. Um, at a very slow pace because it doesn't have brakes and it's got a bunch of other issues, but he did get it to run um, and he did top up this, right? You topped up this uh, yeah, reservoir? that's right. We've got two master cylinders. Um, one's retaining fluid and the other one is, has a leak for sure. You know, I, I can see the puddle underneath the car and hopefully that's uh, something to do with the brakes not working. Fingers crossed there. Cool. Um, and then we have a little bit of a theory that that crazy loud noise when I was applying the brakes is a servo. The brakes are uh, servo assisted in addition to mechanical brakes in the rear and then regular hydraulic brakes um, in the front. So we're hoping that the servo is, um, is acting up a little bit and making that sound because the rest of the brakes aren't working, but you know, who, who knows? Right. Praying to the car gods right now, to be honest. With you. <laughs> so we don't have a lift, we don't have a whole lot. So we're gonna get underneath there, figure out exactly where this brake fluid leak is and try to fix it. And I'm sure they have all sorts of parts for this thing at the <laughs> local auto parts store. So we have a puddle here and it's a little concerning because the car has only been sitting here for like maybe an hour-ish, it was in the driveway. So we do have two master cylinders. I was hoping we had like a brake line issue where we could splice something in like over here and that was the leak, but that is not the case. We have a master cylinder leak. We'd have to find a reseal kit uh, or a new master cylinder. So basically just impossible. I'm thinking at this point, we're gonna have to bleed out these brakes. Um, yeah, he already filled the reservoir. That obviously didn't fix it. So we'll have to bleed out the brakes, uh, see if we can get our brakes back and then I'll just monitor this leak and I'll show you guys. We'll press it a few times under here and just see if it's a real live leak and if it's even possible at this point to drive it. All right, so luckily the wheel cylinders are not leaking. I've looked over all of them. So there is our bleeder. So we gotta crack that, and then I'm going to work uh, the lever right there so we don't need anyone inside of the car. I'll just be underneath it while Steve's opening up the bleeders. Uh, we'll bleed those out. And Steve knows a lot about these cars, by the way. He's restored a couple of uh, 50s Rolls Royces, and he just pointed out that this is a leather pouch over the gigantic leaf spring. So this has a leaf spring suspension back here and you fill this leather pouch with grease. It's like a serviceable thing. And a lot of these have the leather leaf spring pouch missing and this one is intact. So overall, this car is just in really, really nice condition. And another part of the car that he pointed out was the battery box. So I guess in the world of old Rolls Royce, this is rotted out. This is something people check on right away to know if it's a good car to buy. And this one's intact, so definitely dirty, um, but solid nonetheless. And yeah, you can just tell the overall condition. It's a Southern car, uh, no holes anywhere, just in good shape. So anyway, let's get to bleeding some brakes and see if we can stop this like 6,000 pound giant. All right, here we go. All right, I'm all the way. You're closing? Yep. All right, I'm going back. So we don't want to suck up any air. All right, go ahead. Is anything coming out yet? Not yet, I'm gonna close. Okay, close, go ahead and open. All right. I'm getting some bubbles. All right, cool. Basically, we're just gonna keep on doing this until we have some clean fluid coming out the back. And open. I'm open. Lots of bubbles. Yeah. It's getting better though. It sure is. Go ahead and close. Closed. Open. I'm open. Close. I'm closed. And open. I'm open. Close. Closed. Fires right up, I gotta say. It starts up well. And this is the parking brake. So push that in. And let's see what we got. Oh, gotta go into gear, that helps. stops and we don't get that crazy noise. It's definitely got a misfire. Nice, we have brakes. All right, so we have good news, bad news, good news, good news, I think. Uh, good news is this 6,000 pound Rolls Royce now stops. It feels really, really good for 
you know, drum brakes that are 60 years old. Um, bad news is we still have that leak. There's really not much we can do about it. But the good news is I'm just going to bring a little bit of brake fluid. It shouldn't leak out all that much, especially on the highway when I'm not using the brakes. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to gamble. I like crazy road trips. If you guys saw my CL65 video from Kansas when it was zero degrees out, I'm, I'm down for the adventure. So I think we'll be okay with the brakes. I don't recommend it. Um, the other good news is that you guys can save a ton of money by, first off, not buying a 60-year-old Rolls-Royce, and secondly, by using today's video sponsor, Honey. Honey is America's number one online shopping tool. It searches for promo codes automatically so you save money at checkout, and it works on many popular sites you're probably already on anyway. Here I am buying some pizza online, and I saved almost eight bucks. Here I saved $27 on car parts, and for this grill, it found a promo code worth a whopping $87 in savings. Getting Honey is free and easy. Just go to joinhoney.com slash legit streetcars. Click here and click here and you're done. When there's a coupon, Honey finds discounts of 18% on average. So just go to joinhoney.com slash legit streetcars or click on my link in the video description box. And a big thanks to Honey for continuing to support automotive content creators like myself. Now let's get back to the Rolls Royce. We have this thing stopping now. We need to get this engine running a little bit better. We gotta figure out the misfire and let me show you some really, really expensive spark plug wires that I had to buy. All right, so here are $250 Rolls Royce spark plug wires. So these have been handmade and tested by Anna. So thank you, Anna. And here we are. So. We are gonna replace these as sort of a maintenance item to see if it'll clear up the misfire. It sounds like a slight misfire, it's not too bad. Um, and we're gonna see if the plugs look new, maybe they've been replaced already, and check the gap. So Steve found out online that these are factory gapped at 25,000, but a little Rolls Royce trick is to gap them at 35,000 and supposedly it'll make it idle smoother. So we're gonna attack the ignition system and kind of see what we can see and cross our fingers that we have the parts to fix it. All right, so here we go. We have one side open. So there's actually two levers to open the hood. So we just push this one down. There we go. And now we have this and there you go. All right, so I just have one tube I have to disconnect and we can get this air cleaner out of the way and we'll have kind of a little bit more access on this side as well. Okay, so that's that. Now we lift this up and this holds it. How cool is that? It's an air box cleaner service position with an air box that has no filter. So I'll show you guys here, I guess later, but there's some kind of mesh in here that we clean. So anyway, we can now see the 6.2 liter V8. So some of the earlier Silver Clouds, the Silver Cloud one, they had uh, this, a straight six, I believe. And this has the 6.2, like the biggest V8 they could cram in here. And this uses a GM Hydromatic transmission. So a very good transmission. Those are pretty much bulletproof, so, okay. I don't really know what's going on here. Um, let's just start figuring it out. All right, so we have a pretty big ignition coil here and the lead goes right into the center of the distributor cap, which actually threads on, believe it or not. And then we just have to take out two flathead screws. There's one. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, and what in the world is going on in here? Wow, are you kidding me? Do these things just lay in here? Come on. No. That's it. Is there like a needle that pokes the spark plug wire? That's right. No, get out of here. It's pretty archaic, huh? Look at that. A needle pierces the spark plug wire. Here's the hole. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, man, I'm going to have a blast exploring this car mechanically and finding all sorts of weird, weird things like this. This is so cool. Okay, so before I start removing all of these, I want to mark... Uh, which ones go where, because I don't think we're gonna be able to find much of that information online. All right, so we had to remove the wheels to get to the spark plugs and wires, and there is an inner fender liner that I just removed that kind of covers up the gearbox right there. Uh, so here are the drum brakes. They have little cooling fins on them. Pretty awesome. And then we have wide open access to the spark plugs and the wires right here. So we are gonna remove these spark plugs, which are practically new, so we'll get to see what those look like. Um, and then swap out these wires. And there is the exhaust manifold. The gearbox doesn't really look to be leaking. This bushing is pretty much shot. And what in the world is that? 
What is that? What are these contact thingies? Look at that. That is hitting that contact and maybe, a, hang on a second. This is so weird, guys. Comment down below. I know there's a bunch of old Rolls-Royce experts in the comment section. <laughs> what is going on here? This little metal rod thingy. Oh, and hang on. This also has some kind of hydraulic suspension switch. I believe this is for the rear. So I think this is normal and heavy. Not really sure if that works, but maybe that has something to do with with this weird looking contraption. I don't know, so much to discover. But for now, uh, let's just try and make this spark plug wire replacement as easy as possible. It's kind of a big pain in the butt to get all the way in here. All right, change of plan. So these $250 spark plug wires have two 90 degree ends crimped on both sides, but the wires on the rolls are just cut off at the end with the little hole there where the needle slides into. So had I known this, I would have just bought universal wires for maybe like 30, 40 bucks and just made them myself. So it's kind of a shame to have to cut these up to make them work. I thought they were specific to this car. So at this point, I went to the auto parts store and I bought the world's oldest voltmeter sitting on the shelf at Napa. This thing looked like it had been returned like 20 years ago to tape all over it. Um, so I overpaid for this guy. We're gonna check the ohms on each spark plug wire just to double check if that's even an issue before we go down the route of spending more money that we don't need to spend. All right, let's check this first plug wire and it looks like we're at about eight or 9,000 ohms. So about 10 to 12,000 ohms per foot of plug wire would be acceptable. And this is a pretty long plug wire. So we're in really good shape. All right, so here is another one. I would call that good. So I'm gonna go around and test all of these, make sure they all ohm out nicely. They look to be in good shape. None of the insulation is ripped or anything, although they do look old. So eventually I will replace these. Um, so I'll check out the wires and let's pull some plugs. We're on the passenger side now. And I wonder, it doesn't look like there's an exhaust leak, but there's quite the gap here. So I don't know if we wanna open up a can of worms of trying to tighten stuff, maybe I will. Uh, but here are these spark plugs. So I already pulled this wire off. These things look very, very new. So not sure if someone was messing around in here uh, a few years ago and replaced the plugs with NGKs. So let's pull these out and see what they're gapped at. Okay, let's check out the gap here. It's right at 25,000, so factory spec. Okay, well I keep on running into weird, cool things and I have no clue what this is. I mean, guys, seriously. This is like a piece of foam. What are you doing, guy? All right, let's just open this guy up just a tad. All right, we're at 30,000, so a little more. All right, so 35,000, so we'll recap them all right there, and hopefully it'll idle a little bit better. All right, last plug on this side. All right. Yeah, so they don't really look, I mean, they, you know, they're a little black, but nothing's dripping, no oil. Wow, this is really bad. So the lowest this goes is 20 thousandths. I can't even get it in there. This is like maybe less than 15 thousandths, something like that. Wow, that is bad. That'll definitely cause it to run poorly. Let's open this guy up. Okay, so 35 thousandths, this is weird. So yeah, someone changed the plugs. This one was just gapped very, very tight. All right, so the spark plug wires are all back together. All of the plugs have been gapped at 35 thousandths. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping this will run smoother than it did before. We also have to go drive this thing a little bit more. I mean, he did drain the gas out and get some fresh stuff in here, but it just hasn't really been driven in a long time. So not really sure what's going on uh, with the carburetors, but let's see what we got here. It fires up nicely. Oh yeah, it's shaking a lot less now. Yeah, right off idle is smooth. Before we were getting just a little kind of shakiness, but this is pretty good. Not bad. Yeah, it sounds really good. Right off, right off idle. Cool. Let's see, we got, this is broken off right here. This little hose, this is like an intake heater, I believe. So not the end of the world, especially in this 80 degree weather, 85 degree weather. It does sound like we have a little bit of an exhaust leak. I wonder if it's this flange. Oh yeah, yep, this flange is leaking for sure. Not good. I honestly don't really want to mess with this. I tried tightening them, 
they're really tight but obviously there's a little gap there so probably gonna leave that for when we get back home so if I snap that off we're gonna be dead in the water and this thing is just running so good so we have brakes it's running smooth uh, what's next? We have to move on to changing the oil. It's been a very long time. Oh, and this car does have factory air conditioning. And it's a big deal that we have the original purchase agreement that says we have factory AC because some guys retrofit AC on these cars. It was a rare option along with the power steering and the fact that this is left-hand drive. And this is more desirable here in the States. And this is the original air filter. 60 year old air filter. It is just a bunch of metal wire mesh. And per Rolls Royce, you dip this in kerosene to clean it. So pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So they were uh, thinking about low maintenance back then, I guess. And that is looking fairly clean. I don't think we really need to mess with that. Oh, and hang on, it's got kind of a, a, a bird stopper filter here. This is the pre-filter, another mesh screen right in the beginning, that is amazing and it's just sucking air from right here. So this is a hot air intake with a cleanable k and style filter, all right? This was the original performance intake. There is a little bit of a fuel crisis going on in this part of the country right now. So Steve was only able to find 87. So when he drained the tank, he put 87 in this thing. Uh, these things really need 93. So I think we have 93 now. We're gonna go find out. Um, but I am going to add a few additives in here. So we have the Amsoil Performance Improver. Uh, so this is gonna help clean up the valves and whatnot and the carburetor. The carburetors have just been sitting there with old fuel forever. Uh, and then we have upper cylinder lubricant. So you guys know I love my Amsoil product and check out this trick. You just do one of these and it opens. I'm just kidding. There's an electronic popper on the inside, 1961. Steve's in there, he just popped it. Um, how cool is that? And then the gas cap on this thing is like, this will take a bullet, man. This is crazy. And of course it doesn't seal. So we're just gonna, oh yeah. Rolls his double fist in here with the good stuff. So this will hopefully make it run a little bit better too, along with getting the 93 octane in there. I think we're gonna be all set. I think this is gonna run well. Okay, so we have a new old stock Rolls-Royce oil filter, which I am not gonna use. I'm totally keeping this the way it is. Uh, we have an aftermarket one, and I'm gonna use that this time around. I just wanna keep that old one in the trunk because I think it looks cool. Uh, we got a ton of seals, and then this guy takes nine quarts of oil, so I'm going uh, with the high zinc Z-Rod from Amsoil. This is meant for these older cars that need a little bit higher zinc concentration. This is also really good uh, for performance engines as well. So 1040, you guys know I sell this stuff. Link down below, 25% off if you use my site. Um, so let's go drain nine quarts of really old Rolls-Royce oil or whatever the last guy used. Okay, so the Rolls-Royce normally comes with a tool kit that includes a special Allen tool to remove the drain plug for the oil. Uh, but this toolkit is missing and Steve's had one or two of these cars. So he made his own and it's not standard. It's not metric. It's just some weird size from Rolls Royce, I guess. So he had to kind of grind this down and make it work. Okay, there we go. Not bad. Let's see what this stuff looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is very black. Very, very black. I mean, who knows how old this is. That's nine quarts. Wow. Well, you still got to do the oil filter. It's a cartridge style, but that didn't look like nine quarts. Cotter pin keeps on poking me. Come on, baby. Why is this the longest bolt in the world? There we go. Okay. Now, can we sneak this out? I got the cartridge out. The housing doesn't seem very easy to sneak out. I'm um, kind of making a mess, unfortunately. But yeah, here is the gigantic oil filter cartridge looks okay doesn't look horrible oh and what is this oh man there's all sorts of parts inside of here they're all just kind of falling apart i'd love to get this out all right guys this is a total nightmare i've been messing with this for like 20 minutes everything kind of fell apart and i can't get this canister out it's really hard to show you my phone and camera and mic and everything's getting disgusting but yeah we have the uh this doesn't really matter because none of you guys have this car, but this is the spring and washer setup, okay? So if you're ever doing an oil change on these, everything just fell out. So I had to figure this out from watching a old man on YouTube do this and some articles I found. Uh, so this is what you gotta do before you put the canister on. After messing with it for a few minutes, I got the, uh, the filter actually on here. 
You get everything nice and gross too. It'd be perfect if you could take this canister out, but some of the steering's getting in the way. But anyway, here is our pain in the butt oil filter. And now I have to somehow flip this around with no room and, and screw it in, so. Rolls Royce oil change, people. The gloves kind of gave up. The cotter pin ripped them a bunch of times. And uh, this was the hardest part of today, was changing out the oil filter. Not, not a good time, so kind of disgusting. We're gonna go ahead and fill it up with oil. So I was mistaken, it's not nine quarts. It's uh, about seven and a half to eight. And according to people on the internet, they say to run this one a little bit lower on oil, so more towards the seven quart mark, so it doesn't leak as much. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna run the proper amount of oil and I'll take a little bit of leakage. I don't trust an old car like this that doesn't leak a little bit. And definitely no funnel needed. Look at this gaping hole to fill the oil. You cannot mess this up. All right, guys, um, it is the next morning. I've cleaned myself up a little bit and we just fired up the rolls and we're taking off. So maiden voyage here to the gas station. So we need to get some 93 octane. Hopefully they have it and uh, see if it runs any better. I mean, it runs pretty decent, I think, right now. And so it's shifting, which is a plus. Yeah, it's very, very lofty very floaty very cool though yeah I mean it runs good it runs good yeah no, no real misfires or anything like that god I wish we could fix the exhaust leak it doesn't sound too bad in here it just it would just be nice oh yeah <laughs> lots of slop in the steering like I said I've driven a lot of uh, interesting cars but uh, this has got to be like top three. I don't know, man. I feel right at home. This is like really comfortable. Uh, yeah, I like it. The oil pressure gauge reads basically nothing. So that's not good. I don't think, uh, I don't think that's a real issue though. I think it's probably just the gauge. It is 60 years old. But we have that and then, oh, this is actually getting up there too, our water tap. It did start off right at the bottom. getting on a big road the shifts are really nice this uses a GM hydromatic transmission all right there we go 35 according to the gauge oh so we're in third I guess I gotta there we go shifts into fourth I just got to the gas station <laughs> that is so cool check out this radio does this look like a Ford radio from the 90s it doesn't say Ford, but it definitely looks like one. Just shooting this into a huge barrel, basically. <laughs> okay, there we go, yeah. It looks pretty good. It's not gonna stop automatically, that's for sure. All right, so 11 gallons, so I would imagine like a 22-ish gallon tank, something like that. All right, so our fuel gauge basically works, and now look at the oil pressure. Now the gauge works, and we're still really hot on coolant. The amp meter seems to be doing something, so that's good. So who knows what's going on with these gauges, but let's go get a, uh, a temp gun at the auto parts store. You can measure the oil somehow with this button. Check it out. Press this button and it says minimum oil. So this fuel gauge turns into an oil gauge. <laughs> I have no idea how it does that or how accurate it is. It has a dipstick and we're good on oil. But yeah, it has an oil gauge in the fuel gauge. Very weird. We're cruising along about 50-ish miles an hour. We checked it with the GPS. 50 is actually like 47. 46 something like that so it's off but uh overall it's it's not bad it's not bad i mean the alignment is decent for such an old car and let's see our water temperature has gone down so it seems like it might be an airflow issue uh, as soon as we get going it does go a little bit more towards the middle which is great because i'll be driving 150 miles on the highway uh hopefully we don't run into any traffic but we're still gonna take a look at this cooling system a little bit before we leave, just in case. Look at how far down the water temperature went. We were going about 50-ish miles an hour, and it's only like maybe 70 degrees right now. Well, we found a Walmart before we found an auto parts store, so hopefully they have one of those laser temperature guns so we can see what this engine is really running at. And uh, we'll grab some coolant too. So on the valve cover, we're at 205, and we've been idling this thing, and the, the gauge right now is showing pretty much pegged. Intake manifold 207. 
want to get the cylinder head, but you got to be careful not to get too close to the exhaust manifold, otherwise you're going to get crazy readings. Like, what are we showing here? Like 350 <laughs> on the exhaust manifold. That's not real. Um, there's the head. Nah, that's too close. Yeah, 222. That's the cylinder head. A lot of coolant temperature sensors are plugged right into the head. So, yeah, I'd say that gauge is way off. This is totally normal. All right, so we're adding in some of this water wetter stuff. I have no idea if this works. I used to put this in cars when I was in high school. Make some pretty bold claims, run up to 30 degrees cooler, uh, don't overheat and stuff like that. Not sure if it works, but for 10 bucks, I'm just gonna throw it in there and uh, hope it helps out a little bit. So when we started this journey with this car, it looked like it had a decent, normal amount of coolant. And now after driving it, and I mean, it hasn't really been driven at all in years, it's gone down a little bit, so I'm not sure if there was an air pocket or what. Um, but anyway, we are going to top it up with coolant now before we hit the road to fill up the tires. They're all at about 20 PSI. Um, so that's good news because that means they're not leaking. They're all equally kind of going down after many, many, many years. All right, so it ended up taking about a half gallon. That could definitely cause a fluctuation uh, in the temperature, so hopefully that will help. Um, but we are ready to hit the road. So. I have a tire patch kit, some extra coolant, a bunch of fluids. Uh, we can fill up the tires with this little compressor and the cigarette lighter does work. Oh, and I gotta show you the coolest thing in the world that Steve got me, an LSC license plate. I'm a legit Rolls owner now. All right, so we're at an old school gas station. It's really, really cool. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but we're actually just getting air and it's got these really funky valve stems in the front, but not in the rear. The rear has standard ones. Uh, and we're just looking over everything as well. There was a little bit of smoke. Oh yeah, right there, you see that? That is some brake fluid just dribbling out of the glass jar right onto the exhaust manifold. So we kind of overfilled it for the little leak, although that leak has definitely gone down quite a bit and we barely had to add anything. So anyway, we're gonna set these uh, tires up to about 35 or so, check over all the fluids one more time and I'll see you on the road. 150 mile journey to Florida begins right now. You guys saw my CL65 road trip video. It didn't go well. It didn't go well to say the least. This is horrible. I don't think we're gonna make it. That means this thing is probably lowering a little bit due to the leak. No one should have bought this car. No one. Lots of snow. Lots of snow in the middle of nowhere. But I'm feeling more confident about this 1961 Rolls Royce that just a few days ago didn't run had varnishy fuel, um, had no brakes, it was running poorly after we got it running. What, what else did we do? I don't even know. I feel more comfortable driving this thing for some reason. We are, I think about 10 miles into the trip. Just wanna show you the gauges. Everything looks perfect. Uh, it says I'm going 75 miles an hour, but according to my GPS, that's more like 70. And uh, it's smooth, it's smooth. The alignment's nice. Um, it's very floaty. The suspension is, you know, basically like just driving on a on a cloud and it's a silver cloud. Yeah, silver cloud too. I kind of feel like an old man, I'm not gonna lie. And I feel like I have to dress differently. I've made a stop with the rolls, not for food, but to check everything over. We're about halfway to Amelia Island. And uh, the only thing that's gone wrong is the cigarette lighter stopped working. So it actually worked and I was able to charge my phone and now it's not working, so we're checking at our fuses slash little strips of wire. Oh, and look at this. Actually tells you which one's which. So cigar, switch box three. I don't, I have no idea. Is it that one? Okay. Steve knows, Steve knows. That's the one, it's good. All the fuses look good. So, yeah, not really sure what's going on. If that's the only thing that goes wrong on this trip, I will 100% take that. Filling it up is kind of fun. You kind of just point and shoot, and you really can't miss. Okay, so I think I filled it up right around to where we had filled it up last time. And if that's the case, we went 75 miles, and it burned up like nine gallons of fuel. So whatever the math is on that, it is bad. <laughs> it is really bad. All right, I picked up some essential, straight up bacon. Yeah. That's the thing, five hour energy drink, some crackers, water, and the best part, gotta rock the aviators in this car. So I got myself some $12.99 gas station specials, and I'm ready to go. 
again. I keep accidentally going a little too fast in this car. I told myself I'd keep it to about 60, 65, but honestly, I'm just so comfortable in it. It is such a nice cruiser. It just begs you to go faster. Everything is in the right spots. Your arms feel great. Your seating position is great. Visibility is awesome. People are giving you the thumbs up. It just kind of like makes you happy driving this thing. And what makes me really happy is that these gauges are absolutely perfect. So we have the coolant gauge. You can see it right there. Our oil pressure gauge is good. Everything is golden and I am loving it. I'm listening to Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, only 50s and 60s music in this car, just having a blast. So we started off in South Carolina, I went through Georgia, now we're in Florida, and I can't believe this is my car, guys. I'm just smiling the whole way. It is so much fun. I never thought in a million years I'd be driving a 60-year-old Rolls Royce to a car show in Florida as like part of my job. Like. I had to buy this, like, I mean, this is great. <laughs> I can't wait to bring you guys some content on this car as well, so. Anyway, I'm gonna continue to enjoy this cruise. This was never on my bucket list, but I'm gonna jot it down and then cross it off because this is too much fun. So anyway, I apologize for the noise. I don't have the bike set up or anything. I'm trying to be safe while I'm driving. I am staying far, far away from anybody because the brakes work well, but they are four-wheel drum, so not the best in emergency stop situations. Oh shoot, it's starting to rain, and uh, I was not expecting this. We checked the radar. Didn't say it was gonna rain. Florida, what is the deal? I feel like you probably do this all the time. Um, okay, anyone wanna guess how to turn on the wipers? Uh, screen and wiper, it says. No idea if that works, hang on. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at how cute these little guys are. They don't do anything, but I'm not even mad at them. This is amazing. All right, I guess it's better than nothing. Yeah, not the best. Not the best wipers in the world, but if I replace them, it'd be pretty decent. These are probably like a million years old. Pretty nice, huh? Oh, very nice. Yeah. It's nice driving around and just staring at that. A little weird. Spirit of ecstasy. Yeah, that's right. That was like, this This lady was like a, a mistress for Rolls, one of the Rolls guys. There was two of them, Henry Rolls, and I can't remember the other one. Oh, is that the story? And this was one of the, the mistress to one of the guys, okay. yeah. I'm learning a lot about this car Yeah. in this video. I, I, this is the first time I'd ever laid hands on a Rolls Royce before, and now it's mine, so. You have to do the Hoogie's Garage, play the harp. Yeah, it does sound pretty good. That's how you know it's real. Yeah, real metal. <laughs> All right, so Wizard is the first other YouTuber to see this car, so a few more of them are on their way. I'll show them the car, and that's pretty much it, guys. It really doesn't get much better than this. Uh, we got away with a few easy fixes on this one. Sometimes we don't get as lucky, but I'll take it so I can enjoy the weekend and then this is getting shipped back home. So uh, we'll see who shows up here next. It's the next morning and I am following Sam Crack and Rich Rebuilds in the giveaway E39 and I'm specifically following them in the Rolls Royce because of the two cars. This is the more reliable one. So we were up till about one o'clock in the morning trying to get this thing to idle and not misfire. Uh, it's got some bad plugs. I believe it's got a bad coil, but we couldn't find any parts for it. So here we are. It keeps on dying out. So I'm here to help just in case it totally breaks down in the uh, roadside assistance Rolls Royce. Don't I look like that? Patina. 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 I'm a typical Rolls Royce owner. Well, I don't get to park with the Rolls Royce people, but I do get to park next to a sweet Elante and I could probably fit this thing in the trunk of my car. All right, so I got absolutely no footage of the car at the show. I was walking around talking with people, hanging out, and uh, I just didn't get to it. But it is way later in the day, and me, Sam, and Rich are going to eat. We're gonna have a little snack in the Rolls Royce. So these guys are already I'm going to town back here. The guys kicked this out Wait, what, are you, what, are you, what, is, what are you guys doing? What is that? We're just, we're just getting is ready that, to eat this. Is yeah. that regular mustard? Of course yeah. it is. Jesus, what oh, are you guys talking oh, yeah. about? Where'd you get this oh, yeah. from? It's Dude, a Rolls Royce. You gotta have the great coupon. Oh, oh, great these man. are crazy. Give me this. Alex, you're the best man. Come on, Thank no, you, I can't. This can't be in my car. <laughs> Jeez. What are you doing? All right. Uh, oh, wow. wow, Rich. I didn't know how yeah, much you, really you like good. that stuff. Really good, um, huh? Can I just have my mustard back at this point? Absolutely not. It's a great coupon. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Here you go, Sam. You can. <laughs> I'll make an exception this one time. This one time. That's disgusting. You good? No, no, I'm oh. good. Okay. I'm good. The whole crew pulling in at the same time. All right, so I found a few more guys that feel the need to play with my car. It bounces a lot. Oh, it's not a musical instrument. Although it does sound pretty good. <laughs> It's very bouncy. Your tires are too That's soft. Low. Yeah, I couldn't get any more air in them. They have like 25 PSI. Open the trunk into the back of What do you think, Jared? Does it have low. anything? I mean, as long as it's been upside down, it's just now finally reaching max. I'll take it. I mean, it's, I have it's every on. single fluid in the trunk, so we are good to go. <laughs> it's on the stick. <laughs> all right, guys, that will do it for this probably really long video. We are all going to go have some dinner. Yes. Maybe take the rolls. I don't know. Or walk. Um, so I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next... I knew it. <laughs> good work. Good I'll catch work. all of you in the like next video. Subscribe. Like and subscribe. Whoa, the Grey Poupon. Eat Grey Always. Poupon. It's very good. Oh. I'm, gonna get, I'm getting sponsored by them one day. Really? <laughs>